Hi guys, we're now going to start proving theorem 5. Now theorem 5a has an asterisk next to it. That means that the proof of theorem 5a is examinable in a test or exam. Now let's see what theorem 5a says. Theorem 5a says the opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. Now first of all, let's remind ourselves what a cyclic quad is. A cyclic quad is a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure, where each of the vertices or corners of the quadrilateral are on the circumference of a circle. Now it says the opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. Supplementary means they add to 180 degrees. So if you're given a cyclic quad, you know the opposite angles add to 180. Now what this means is in this figure, angle A and angle C add to 180, and angle B and angle D will add to 180 degrees. So let's have a look at what we're given. In this case, we're given circle center O, and we're given cyclic quad A, B, C, D. What are we trying to prove? Well, the first thing is we're trying to prove that angle A plus angle C equals 180 degrees. And secondly, the other pair of opposite angles are also adding to 180 degrees. Now let's start by proving the first thing. In order to prove number one, we need a construction. So I've drawn in the construction, and that construction is radii OB and OD, and I've chosen to label the angles at the center angle O1 and angle O2. And you'll notice why that's very helpful in a second. Okay, let's start our proof. First of all, angle O1 is equal to twice of angle A. And my reason being, angle at center equals twice angle at circumference. So this is from theorem 2. So there's my angle that is formed at the circumference from B and D. And B and D also form A, sorry, B and D form that angle at the center. And B and D also form the angle A at the circumference. So angle O equals twice angle A. But angle O2 is going to be twice angle C for the exact same reason. Angle at center equals twice angle at circumference. Now this is because B and D form angle O2 at the center and they form angle C at the circumference. So what this means is that angle O1 added together with angle O2 will be twice angle A plus twice angle C. Now this is because I've just stated that angle O1 is 2A and angle O2 is 2C. So this is just following logically from the two steps before. But angle O1 and angle O2 will add to 360 degrees because they are angles round a point. So this means that 2A plus 2C will also equal 360 degrees because I just argued in red that O1 and O2 equals 2A and 2C added together. Now this means I'm almost done because if I divide both sides of the equation by 2, I will get angle A plus angle C equals 180 degrees, simply from the line before. So now I've proved the first thing that I wanted to prove in orange, that angle A plus angle C equals 180 degrees. Now for number 2. Now number 2, I could do the exact similar proof. What I could do is I could construct AO and CO, which are radii, and I could argue the exact same argument. So I've said similarly, by joining AO and CO, we can prove that ABC plus ADC equals 180 degrees. Now guys, in a test or exam, they're never going to ask you to prove both. What they're going to do is say, given the diagram, prove that the opposite angles A and C are supplementary. Or they would say B and D. So they won't get you to ask to you they won't ask you to prove both, so you just have to know what construction to do in order to prove the pair that they're interested in. Now what's the reason we're going to use when we know that the opposite angles are supplementary? Our reason is opposite angles of a cyclic quad. Okay, let's see what this looks like in an example. So this is in your notes. It says determine the size of each of the unknown angles. Well, first of all, as soon as I look at this, I see a cyclic quad, A, B, C, D. Now, that means that I've just learned that the opposite angles of a cyclic quad will add to 180. So I already know that X and Z will add to 180. 
and y and my 90 degrees will add to 180. So y seems fairly easy, but if I want to find x, I'll need to know z. Now I am going to argue that z equals 80 degrees. Now that's because this is a straight line. So I'm going to say z is equal to 80 degrees, adjacent angles on a straight line, which means x must be 100, because the opposite angles of a cyclic quad add to 180 degrees. So there's my reason, opposite angles of cyclic quad. Now y is pretty easy, because y is opposite to 90 degrees. So y must also be 90, for the exact same reason, opposite angles of cyclic quad. So there's an example of theorem 5a. Here's another example. This one says PS is a diameter. Now as soon as I start seeing the word diameter, I start thinking that that means there's a center of a circle. That means that there's radii, which might be equal, which might help me. And I immediately also start thinking of theorem 3. Because theorem C3 said that if there was a diameter, a diameter will subtend 90 degrees at the circumference. So, I'm going to start with that. Immediately I know that y will be equal to 90 degrees. And that is theorem 3, which reason was angles in a semicircle. So there's my 90 degrees. Now what I'm going to do is have a look at angle P. I see that angle P is adjacent to angle P1, which is 120 degrees. So angle SPQ, notice I can't call it angle P because there are two angles at P. So angle SPQ is equal to 60. And my reason being, adjacent angles on a straight line. So I've labelled in my 60 degrees. Now this is great, because 60 is opposite to x. Those are a pair of opposite angles in a cyclic quad. So therefore, x must be 120. Because opposite angles of a cyclic quad will always add to 180 degrees. And finally, I have proved that z is 30 degrees. Now why that is true is I have sum of angles in a triangle. I've got my 60 degrees, my 90 degrees at y, and z is the third angle in the triangle. Now let's have a look at theorem 5b. Now theorem 5b is the converse of theorem 5a. So it says, if the opposite angles of any quadrilateral that you're given, if they add to 180, then this quad is cyclic. So if you know that a and c add to 180 degrees, then you know this quad is cyclic. Or, if I know B and D add to 180 degrees, I know this quad is cyclic. And what reason I'm going to use when I use this theorem for proving a cyclic quad is I say opposite angles supplementary. Notice you can't say opposite angles of cyclic quad because this isn't a cyclic quad. You're trying to prove it's a cyclic quad. So this is the second way we can prove something is cyclic. Remember, the first way was in theorem 4b. So theorem 4b said if you can prove you have angles in the same segment, you can prove a quad is cyclic. And this is the second way. If you can prove that opposite angles are supplementary. So let's have a look at an example. This question says prove that PQRS is a cyclic quad, and obviously there's a typo, if you are given that... RST is a straight line. I clearly cannot type. So I'm afraid there's two typing errors there. So it says prove that PQRS is a cyclic quad if you're given that RST is a straight line. Okay, now in order to prove something's a cyclic quad, we have two options. I've already said that we have butterfly angles as an option, which was theorem 4b, or that my opposite angles are supplementary. Now I've been given that RST is a straight line, so that might be useful. Now, I don't see any pattern of the butterfly angles or theorem 4b here. So I'm assuming this is going to have to be that I'm going to have to try and prove that that is a cyclic quad by saying that 75 plus angle Q equals 180 or by arguing that 40 plus P2 equals 180. So one of those, I either need to find angle P2 or I need to find angle Q. Now, if I look at what other shape I've got here, I've got a triangle. Now, in a triangle, if you know two angles, you can figure out the third angle. 
So I have 40 degrees and I have 35 in this triangle, which means I can probably figure out Q. So I've said angle Q is 180 minus the 40 minus the 35 because sum of angles in a triangle. So if I work that out, I get that angle Q is 105. Now that's perfect because that means that angle Q plus angle S1 is 180 because I have 105 and my 75. Now that's all I needed. I have one pair of opposite angles supplementary. So therefore, PQRS must be a cyclic quad. And my reason? Because my opposite angles are supplementary.